Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I thought I'd take a look at what swimmers need to know about rivers. I'm going to talk about lowland rivers, but not about upland rivers where there's a lot of white water because that's not what I've got locally. And with the current situation, it's not somewhere I can drive to either. So I'm swimming in Hampshire and I'll be in the River Itchen and I'm going to talk you through that. It's a really good idea to walk alongside the stretch you're planning on swimming on just to get a feel for if there are any changes since the last time you went, looking at the rate of flow and whether it's still within the banks. I wouldn't get into a river that had burst its banks. There's too many extra obstacles. I'm also taking a look to see what hazards are there and having a chat to any fishermen that I'm going to have to swim past just to kind of minimise the opportunity for any conflict once I'm in the water. The first thing I'm going to do before I start my walk up to check out the swim is take a look at the get out and see if it's easy to get out and um, whether I'm going to face any problems there. Something I've noticed just here is that the deeper water which is on the outside of the bend and as you can see the bend sweeps this way it's passing underneath this bush just here um, which I wouldn't want to get tangled in and there's a possibility of there being um, discarded fishing line there so I'm going to be swimming wide of that or the other side of it but definitely not straight through where the um, where the stuff in the water getting caught in something where it is touching the water and the water is pushing against it kind of like a colander um, is called a strainer and what I don't want to be is the uh, the pasta in the colander. Useful to spot um, any possible get outs and if I felt too cold or for some reason needed to get out the water there's one just here. It's always good to know that you don't have to stay in all the way to your intended get out and that should things change you can hop out when you want to. Just here you can see the bank juts out a little bit and you can see it's disturbing the water. So we have the main flow over this side which is interrupted here uh, with, a, with the kind of turbulent water which is the, uh, the edge of the eddy or the fence line of the eddy. And then here we've got an eddy. This slow moving area which is pretty much from the corner where the little branches are hanging over there all the way down and then it rejoins the flow, the, the eddy peters out just underneath these branches here, you can see. So this area here is slow moving. If we need to stop and take a break or um, consider getting out or there's anything doing, then hopping into an eddy is a place where you can just take a moment to, um, to gather your thoughts and think about what it is you need to do next. There's a weir and it's sucking off water. It's like an overflow channel, probably for flood prevention. You can see the water is getting sucked in around the poles and really flowing in there from just across here. So that's definitely an area I want to stay clear of. I need to stay in the water that's heading across that way. As I'm walking up, I'm looking at the patterns in the water to check there's no sudden waves, which would indicate there's something under the water that's quite close to the surface. Well, that's interesting. I always like to look out for a bit of wildlife on my way, and it looks like we've got a little um, track here that if I'm not uh, mistaken I would expect that something like otters are using to get in and out of the water. So this part of the river is the part that I'm most concerned about so far in that there's only a very small gap and it's got vegetation just under the water as well. 
just about there, you might be able to see it. So I'm going to need to swim in very close to this bank, almost under the bow of this tree, to make sure that I get a clear run through without touching it. So it looks like we've got another possible get out here, if we get in and it's too cold or whatever. Um, but just being mindful that further along in the water, there are some spiky bits that I definitely don't want to get on. So if I'm going to use this get out, it needs to be at the very start of the eddy, just up here. So that completes my little walk up to my swoosh. The swoosh will only take around about 10 minutes. There's a couple of hazards that I need to look out for. There are strainers which are hanging into the water in different areas, some of which are right in the flow, so I'm going to need to move around. And then there's also a weir on that river right, so as I go down I just need to be listening out and looking out for that to make sure that I stay over on the river left to get past it easily. All in all, it's looking pretty good. Most of the way down there's a really clear path and I should be able to swim that nice and easily. Let's get going. So getting in, I've got a couple of choices. I can either run and jump and clear these dog steps. I'm not gonna jump in because I'm not keen on jumping in. By walking in, I can control the, the speed at which I get in and I can just acclimatize gradually getting in. Whoa. Wow, wee. Now that is chilly. A river is likely to be a degree or so cooler than the sea. Um, and it's much more prone to being cooler when you've had rain uh, because of the runoff from the land. Something that's really useful to be able to do is to cross out of an area that you're not happy to be in into an area that you're better off in. So I'm going to demonstrate that here by doing what's called a ferry glide. Ducks will just point across at someone who stood on the bank with, uh, with bread and they will just swim straight at them and end up way downstream. Now what we want to be like is more like swans. So swans set their body across the river and then paddle, maybe looking over to where they want to end up, but their body is certainly set off further upstream and diagonal so that they can use the flow to push them over rather than fighting the flow. It's all about using the flow to your advantage. Let's give it a go. So I'm going to try to swim from this eddy across the main flow over to the eddy on the far side without losing too much ground. This time I'm going to do it pointing upstream because I just want to cross as opposed to trying to miss something that's downstream of me. So I'm going to breaststroke it across, I'm going to point my body diagonally across the river and hopefully speed across there. Let's see how we go. And here I am in the far eddy. This time I'm going to go feet first. I'm going to point my head at the bank. going feet first with your head pointing towards the bank that you want to swim towards and kind of side stroking you can maneuver across the river and avoid something that's downstream hopefully and we're off just pulling out into the flow So I can see the flow is taking me towards those trees. So I'm just going to swim sideways a bit and easily miss. 
once I'm clear of the trees, I come back out into the flow. So always swimming to the gap, swimming out around this way, remembering that this was that first get out and knowing that close into the bank there's some spiky bits to miss. So I'm just going to go far enough out to miss this tree. Now I'm coming up on the one part that I was concerned about, where I've got to get in really close to the bank to miss all the gubbins in the water. I'm kind of in an eddy at the moment, but that's okay with me. I would rather swim it and control what's going on than wash over anything that's in the water. So just going through the pinch point now, there's my bit of debris. And now, get back out into the flow and speed up the flow you can see on all these bubbles. What I love about a swoosh is the fact you don't have to put in too much effort to whiz along. Whee! Can you hear that water and see the bridge? That's the bridge I was stood on when I was looking down at the weir. So definitely going to take the slower route of the water or the left hand side of the flow here. So it's not end up getting pulled towards that and having to fight it. Here we go. Is it nice and warm? Tropical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm well clear now and get back out to the flow and really give it some. Oh, and here we are, just about the get out. Well, I've really enjoyed that little swim there. Uh, it's taken about 12 minutes and I hope you've enjoyed joining me too. So there should be a couple of bits and bobs in there to think about if you are considering a swim in a river for the first time. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and it's given you a little bit of an insight into how I would scout a river before I swim in it. Remember, if you're gonna swim in a river, make sure that you've checked out any hazards along the way and that you know where you can get out as well as where you're gonna get in. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like, drop me a comment. I always respond to the comments on my YouTube channel. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing. I've got over a hundred videos about outdoor swimming on my channel. Just click on my face, ding the little bell, and you'll know when the next one's out. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.